Hey everybody, we're going to do something real quick, an easy one, something that is requested all the time. We have a scene that uh, has a dude exercising here and he uh, he says, hey, try me. So we're going to try him and see if we get the knockback effect. That is what we're going for today, where we do something and we get the knockback. And you'll see that it works from any direction. If we come over here and try this guy from here, it knocks us back into the post, into the trees and... There you go, the knockback effect. Super simple to do. Let's check out how to do that with Burst. Now I will say before we get into this, thank you to everybody over on Patreon. You guys are absolute legends and keep this running. All the code is available over there for you to copy and paste because we know how lazy you guys are. All right, let's get into this. Let's start from UAFN as usual. And we have a scene here that tells a bit of a story. We've got our spawner for one player. We've got our little Namiya son, which is uh, a place where they sell ramen. And uh, we've got our dude here and he, and he is practicing his fighting skills. He, right now he has a button around him. We're just gonna hide that for a second. This guy is just a character that has come off of Mixamo with a Mixamo animation, totally free. I totally recommend you guys sign up and get these things for free that you can use inside of your game. Games. It's something fun. So he's got an animation on him that's just fighting. I won't bother going into that. And then there's a button on top of him because that is what's going to trigger our knockback effect. Now the knockback effect is done with a movement modulator. If you see here in my outliner, I've got a movement modulator. Now you can't see it in the scene here, but it does exist down here. It's actually underground. So if we kind of come underground a little bit, we can see it right here. Now it doesn't matter where it exists. Right now it's just hidden. But I think the movement modulator is a bit bugged. You can't hide the effects of it and you can't disable it and enable it. It's kind of weird. But the point is that it's sort of hidden underground. We're going to pull it out when we need it and put it away when we don't need it. Now the settings for the movement modulator are simple. We don't want to affect movement speed because we don't want to have the player change their speed at all. We just want to knock them back. We will apply impulse, put a checkbox there. My forward impulse, because there's no backwards impulse, and we'll talk about how to resolve this in verse, is 3000. It's not visible during game. We don't want it to be seen. The effect is still seen, oddly enough. So we're going to hide it by keeping it underground. And then upward impulse of a thousand. So it's going to bounce them up and back. And this is enabled during all phases because again, like I was saying, I couldn't get it to enable or disable properly. So I've just left it enabled and we're going to move it around. And the other thing that's important, we want to be able to move this movement modulator freely, but it has to be at a particular rotation to the player because you can only impulse forward. So we've connected it to a blueprint. A blueprint is a very simple object that uh, I have made here. And you can see it's just a sphere. When you go to create a blueprint, you just right click and go blueprint class and that'll pop up this window. And then we go to the static mesh component and I just added in a sphere here. So this sphere is in here. It's at scale of 0.1. So if we close up the blueprint and then we go into the mover here in the outliner, we can see down in the, we can see in the details panel for the mover blueprint object, if we come down, we can see rendering actor hidden in game. We don't need to be able to see it. You're not going to see it anyways, but you can just hide it uh, in the game that way so that we won't be able to see it at all. And the movement modulator is also supposed to be hidden, but like I said, the effect still shows up. So that is the setup that we have here. It's just a nice little scene. Uh, to tell a bit of a story about what's going on and how to use this in an effective way that makes sense. Let's take a look at the verse file now. Okay, so now we're inside a verse and I've mentioned in the past that if you want to get rid of your explorer on the left when you don't need it, you can just hit control B on your keyboard and it will just give you your verse file. So I've covered making a basic game manager verse device in other tutorials. I've got one linked below. So I'm not going to cover that, but we've created our basic game manager. We've got three items in here that we use as editables, which means that we can connect everything in our scene to our code. So we've got a movement button, which is the button you saw on the old guy. And we've got our MM mover, which is our blueprint that I showed you that little sphere. It's a creative prop. And we have MM for our movement modular device. And that is defined here as a movement modular device. All of these are instantiated with these little curly brackets. Discuss that as well. But that's the basics of making editables that you can then talk to these devices with your code. All right. So we're going to do something kind of interesting, something different that I haven't shown before. But we're going to extend the creative prop object and we're going to extend by adding on this activate knockback effect 
and it's going to take the agent as its first parameter. It suspends because I think we need a little bit of a delay and then we're not passing anything back. Now, when this function gets called, we're going to be calling it on a creative prop. So we'll take a look at this in a sec and I'll show you where we're doing that. Okay, so on begin, we want to make sure that we have our movement button, the button that is on the old guy. Interacted with event, subscribe, we're gonna call on button click method, which is right here. Simple, you can see this is 50 lines of code, it's nothing. On button click takes the agent that clicked the button. We're not passing anything back, so it's void. We're gonna grab the fort character because we need to find the position of the characters so that we can send the movement modulator over to them. Uh, we use an option because doing teleport to, which means we can move an object really, really quickly, we have to put it in an option or an if because it can fail. And this is just how verse works. So we're going to take our MM mover, which are movement modulator mover, which is the blueprint. And we're going to teleport that to the player's position. It's at this point that I realize I should probably tell you that I've taken the movement modulator and I parented it to the blueprint. You do that. If I take this out and I put it here, you can see now it's sitting above the mover. If I take this and I just drag it onto the mover, it becomes parented so that when you move the mover blueprint, the movement modulator moves with it. Very handy tip. Okay, so once we have moved the mover, which moves the movement modulator, <laughs> we can we can then say, okay, to this MM mover, activate the knockback effect passing in which agent we want it to affect. And we'll look at this and we'll say, okay, a creator prop has an extended function on it. And what it does, we grab the fort character again, and we use option because we're gonna do a bunch of stuff in here and it could fail. So right here, this is the failure point. We're gonna, we're going to grab the yaw of the character. So the yaw is looking left or right. We don't need the pitch and we don't need the roll. Roll is where they're doing something like this, which is weird, and pitch is looking up and down. We don't care about those. We only want to know which way they're facing so that we can put the movement modulator in front of them facing the opposite way. And we want to grab the new rotation that we want this prop to be at. So we'll go to make rotation from yaw pitch roll degrees, grabbing the yaw pitch and roll, which came from here. Now, the reason we're doing it this way is in case we ever do want to change the pitch or the roll, we put these in. But we're grabbing the first item from yaw pitch roll degrees from the rotation of the character, the first one, which is zero because it's an array. Okay, hopefully that's not too much. Then we're going to move the prop and we're going to put it 120 centimeters below where the character is so that it sort of sits underground because we don't want to see that effect go off. We're going to set the rotation correctly from the way the character is looking. We're going to sleep for 0.1 of a second, activate the movement modulator on that agent and then sleep again. And then here we are using option again so that we can move the prop away so that if the character does go back over there but not activate the button, the movement modulator won't affect them because it is sitting 500 centimeters below ground. So it'll never affect anybody, let alone the character that just set it off. So that's it. That's everything that you need to do. It's actually really quite simple uh, overall. The only other thing that I would take note of is the way that I placed the movement modulator in the mover. It is facing 180 degrees on the Z axis because we want to be able to push the character backwards. If it's facing the other way, it'll push them forward. We don't want that. So we set that backwards, but the mover object itself has no rotation applied. Hopefully that makes sense. If you have any questions, let me know anytime, but that's how you do the knockback effect and it's really simple you can activate it anytime you want you can because you're really just passing in the agent that it's going to be affected by so you could use a trigger you could use damage you could do uh, where they go into an area and just knocks them back or you can do it like we've done here where you go too close to a character maybe in a mutator zone and it knocks them backwards so very extendable very useful i think this is a nice simple thing to be able to do again if you have any questions let me know and i'll see you guys in the next one